let's get into it with tonight's party panel. We've got the host of the Gary and Shannon show on KFI AM 640 in Los Angeles. It's Gary Hoffman, along with Democrat pollster and Fox News contributor, the gorgeously pregnant Jessica Talov. We love all of you, Jessica, and your <laughs> tiny roommate. And we've got the host of the radical podcast and libertarian candidate for Georgia's governor's seat. Shane Hazel is back. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Uh, so, good Gary, to be here. it's so good to have you, Shane, and I'm delighted you're here. You're very polite. Uh, Gary, <laughs> it's not his lane. Do you think that's an acceptable answer from someone who considers this, themselves to be the ultimate global diplomat? Well, no. I mean, you point out the fact that this guy is literally a former Secretary of State. He's now a special envoy for climate. There's no better guy to speak on this issue, especially if he's going to try to chain it to climate change. Why wouldn't he be the guy that brings this up? Why wouldn't the, this be his lane? I mean, if, if politics right now is so much about intersectionality when it comes to personal identity, why can't intersectionality also cross over into uh, international relations? A tie climate change to the fact that there are human rights abuses going on in China. It only makes sense. And I, I'm surprised that he's the guy who shies away from something like that. Yeah, and Pete Buttigieg says, Jessica, that our infrastructure is so damaged because roads are racist, yet you have ethnic Muslims in China that are literally sent to concentration camps, raped, tortured, sterilized, or killed, and that's happening now where their slave labor is used to build solar panels off of which John Kerry is directly profiting. Maybe that's the reason he's going a little soft on these guys. I'm not sure that it's it. That There's always just been this disconnect that I never understood about why the tough talk was such a problem. It actually seems like the easy way out, that you could go and you could stand on the floor of the UN and just say, hey, there's a genocide going on in China and carry on with your normal economic practices and China will be happy. It's not like Val Vladimir Putin or Xi Jinping thinks that anyone thinks that they're good guys. Right. So unless there's something with substantive impl implications for them, which is what someone like Enos Cantor is calling for, I really think that it's one of these gimme things that I that it doesn't make sense that politicians don't go for. Like there's nothing more simple than saying Uyghur camps are concentration camps yes. and then carrying on just as you were. And they don't it's not like they're trying to win a popularity prize. They know that they're hated. Yeah. And, and they don't care, but at least right. we should make it seem like we care. Because, you know, we, we've tied climate change to an arbitrary timeline here in this country, and we're obviously willing to sacrifice a pretty solid percentage of our own GDP in order to go along with that timeline. But John Kerry and the other global elites have no problem absolutely ignoring real human suffering. Does that seem like an insane disconnect to you, Shane? Uh, a little bit. Uh, Kerry, I think, believes so much in climate change that he's willing to use slave labor to make himself rich for promoting climate change. Like this guy, you're right. He's got no testicular fortitude whatsoever. He jet sets around the world from house to house, from conference to conference, telling us about how uh, how important the climate change is. And I don't know. I think I'd like to point everybody to the dismantling that Thomas Massey did. I think it was last year, maybe it was two years ago, and sent uh, in, in front of the uh, Congress when he absolutely annihilated the guy for uh, his hyperbole, his disconnect, and choosing and picking parts of well, what's really going on in the world. Yes, I loved that exchange that Congressman Massey had with John Kerry. And I wish there were more people uh, like this reporter who would make these politicians accountable. Because, you know, it's like, I understand why AOC is frustrated, Gary, because, you know, you've got the Democrat establishment that just doesn't care. I don't like her brand of socialism, but I understand that she's mad at her own party. Gary. Well, it makes sense. Jessica mentioned Ennis Cantor, that Boston Celtics player. Uh, this guy, a basketball player, is the one who's bringing more attention to this issue of Uyghurs and genocide in China than anybody in the administration. A yeah. And that should be an embarrassment to the administration. You know what else should be an embarrassment? Inflation, because it's a huge downer. And now even the president's allies are sounding the alarm. Liberal Bastion CNN published an article titled, Why Inflation is a Political Nightmare for Biden. <laughs> yeah, sick burn, bro. When you lost CNN, you screwed. And former Obama economist and Harvard whiz, Larry Summers, who said girls hate math, told CNN that the Biden administration's been wrong every step of the way here. Watch. 
I think that the policymakers in Washington, unfortunately, have almost every month been behind the curve. They said it was transitory. It doesn't look so transitory. They said it was due to a few specific factors. It doesn't look to be a few specific factors. They said when September came and people went back to school that the labor force would uh, grow, and it didn't happen. Driscoll was like, what? Let's get after it. Why are you making fun of Biden? I'll hurt your feelings. So uh, that's what he said, but we couldn't play the whole thing because, you know, rights or something. Copyright <laughs> issues. Exactly. Thank you, Jesse. If CNN and an Obama economist jump ship on Biden, who's left in his corner, Jessica? MSNBC? I guess. MSNBR. <laughs> um, no, there's definitely been an interesting reversal, right, at post the results of last week in Virginia and in New Jersey, where we saw just how seriously people felt about these inflation issues. And it's a precursor to what's going to happen in the midterms, where people are going to want an economic message that makes sense to them and not just denying that it's happening. And that doesn't mean necessarily that they're going to blame the Biden administration for the inflation, but people don't like to be told to their faces that the thing that they're experiencing, they're not actually experiencing. Like, they know how to go pump gas. They know how to pre-order a turkey that you might not get, right? They know how to order a baby crib that is really late if oh, you no. want to know what's going on oh, in my no. house. Yeah, it's okay. Oh. It's okay. Tiny roommates stay in there for a while mm -hmm. longer. So, like, these are all things that are happening in people's real lives, and I think the administration is obviously better served by talking about it than not, because the denying of reality is why people hate Washington. Yes. Right, and they just say, you know, screw them all. Ah, oh, but that that's what I don't understand, Shane, is this administration is saying, oh, so gas is more expensive and, you know, the price of ribeye has gone up 35%. Well, that's a great sign that the economy is healing. It is, it is hotter than a pistol right now, but it doesn't feel that way because, you know, wages, hourly wages have increased 0.4%, but inflation month over month has increased 0.9%. So people are losing money on the deal and when they're having to spend more money it sure as hell feels like a tax if you haven't got a six percent increase in your in, in your um, i don't know your pay and really it's probably 15 to 20 percent by the 1980 standards of measuring inflation you are getting absolutely slaughtered right now yes. and the libertarians have been talking about this forever for 50 years we've been talking about this fiat doomsday that's coming and we're here we are in an economic warfare state right now here in america and i hope people will actually sit up and realize that your government right now the imf and the un and the who and all of these bureaucracies that don't actually work for you that they work for the very very elite out there are at war with america they are collapsing economies they are telling people they are non-essential they are shutting down economy left and right they are mandating people out of the workforce right now and the companies that are doing this to those people they're in a catch-22 because they're going to get slaughtered in court here pretty soon so what you're watching is the meltdown in economic warfare of the elite on the american people and it is going to open a lot of eyes the fact that they said they misstepped or they misread it they are absolutely insane what they've done in the press and in, in the propaganda is absolutely criminal in terms of saying, oh, it's not going to be anything. It's transitory. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going you know, to, to build back better. It's nonsense. And everything that is fleeing right now from fiat is sounding in, it, I should say, it's, it's rebounding in sound currency or at least a, a hedge in things like Bitcoin. So I'm going to tell you, their, their approval ratings are going to continue to slip and it is going to be a slaughter this next time around for the, the, uh, the Republicans. Well, good. I hope the establishment uh, gets thrown out on their ass. And you're absolutely right. As things are swirling down the drain by force, I'm going to keep my crypto. Hey! <laughs> um, they have been wrong about everything, Gary. And, the, you know, what they're saying is, no, just wait for the good stuff to come. Because what's going to happen is rising prices are going to put pressure on the labor market. Uh, so, therefore, we're not going to have to pay people so much money. All of that is going to even out, and businesses will, will start thriving once again. What if that doesn't happen? What if those, that wishful thinking doesn't come to fruition? 
Uh, well, uh, point to me one instance where wishful thinking in the last 24 months has come true. I mean, uh, whether it's COVID, whether it's the economy, whether it's Afghanistan, whether, there's nothing lately that has come true with this wishful thinking. I will tell you one thing, thinking. Gary. But, I will tell you one thing. Pete Davidson okay. got to date Kim Kardashian. One is that true? That was not on my wish list, but okay. <laughs> yes. That's wishful thinking realized. What is going on with that man? What kind of a fire hose is he dragging around? Woo! Okay, sorry. I, sorry. Off topic. Well, you made it the topic. So I went to this 9-11 charity comedy show that he did with Jon Stewart. And Jon Stewart, because, I mean... Everyone is wondering, like, what's happening here? Kate Beckinsale is his greatest conquest, in my mind. And Jon Stewart just called it out, like, in front of 20,000 people. He was like, yeah, it's that big. It, it just, wow. it is that big. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here uh, first on a cable news show.